Daniel O'Connor is the creative genius behind the ICO's next project, which is called Roisin Reimagined. Now, regular followers of Oboe Winfrey will know that over the last weeks, I've spoken to Mirren, who is the owner of the stunning voice of these interpretations of the Shano style songs, and Aoife, who is playing the cello in the orchestra for the Kilkenny project. But we've been saving up Donal because not only did he supersize Murren's original idea for the project, but he also plays the harmonium and the fiddle in the ICO orchestra. So Donal, hello, how are you this morning? Hiya Matthew, good morning and thanks for having me on the, on the uh, Oboe Winfrey. Uh, so I've been tuning in for the last number of weeks and, and really enjoying uh, your, your, um, your, your programs. So uh, it's great to be here. Thank you ever so much for taking the time. Now, there are so many things that I'm interested in, in about your career. Uh, it's impossible really to know where to start to ask you some short questions in six minutes. But really, can you tell me, what is it your experience, what is your experience of the arts, the Irish language, all of these things coming together that made you think this project would be so special? Well, uh, going back, I suppose, I mean, I, I was brought up in an Irish speaking uh, musical uh, an artistic family, um, so I was blessed uh, to have been born into the world, I into that. Uh, my father uh, was a professional fiddle player and still is, uh, and my okay. mother, who sadly passed away in 1999, uh, was a traditional singer and flute player. So um, we were sent to, to learn uh, violin initially uh, and, and fiddle kind of at the same time. So I kind of, in my own learning experience, I straddled both the world of classical and traditional um and uh but i also always had a deep love of irish song of the shannos Shano song tradition um and um the opportunity to work with singers uh such as martin nagalov is something i always you know always have cherished um because you know when you're an instrumentalist you can you can be very focused on the on the instrumental music uh, and I, I think you know when i was younger um lyrics uh, and the words were slow to come to me you know it was, it was always a melody driven process but as i you know as i've, I've got older uh, the appreciation of, of the lyric has grown with me uh, but i've always you know always loved the song so um the chance to work on this project uh came about because Maureen and i have worked together you know for a number of years and on different projects and, and with her solo career and during the lockdown last year we we um which was very difficult for, for artists and musicians and everybody, as we know, uh, we had been asked to go to Windmill Lane to do a live stream um, for the Seamus Ennis Art Centre. And it was a real chink of light during a very dark time, I suppose, for us. Uh, and we went up to the studio and there was a piano there, a Steinway in the studio that many amazing players have played on. And uh, it came to light that day that Kate Bush uh, has, had, had slept under that piano uh, as well as uh, having played it. Um, and we, we tied around to some songs, we had a bit of downtime and we were playing some songs and we were chatting and um, I was kind of saying to Maren, you know, what, what would you like to do next? You know, this is a good time for us to reflect and to think about where to go next. You know, we don't often get these opportunities to, to stop the, the hamster wheel as such. And she said she'd love to do something with a quartet or something with strings and something with piano. And so from that, you know, I suggested, well, why, why not go a bit bigger? Why not think of an orchestra? And why not think of uh, big string arrangements for some of the big Shano songs? The, these songs are, you know, high art and, 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 and big classical forms. Uh, and, you know, sometimes maybe they're underappreciated in Ireland. Um, uh, and it was a way to maybe try and bring them into a contemporary space um, with, with some beautiful arrangements to make these songs shine. Uh, and to reconnect maybe some people who might have been familiar with some of these old songs and melodies uh, from their youth. And it, it, it's been very interesting as part of the project. Many people and a lot of the players in the ICO have said, this has really brought me back. You know, I, I remember these songs from some songs from primary school or from the Gaeltacht, uh, where, where young people would have spent a week or two weeks in the summer uh, out in Kerry or in Connemara or up in Donegal. And so it's been interesting to see that reconnection with the language and with these songs and, and and i suppose my background has has sort of set me up to be able to to be able to explore that and, and to, to cherish it mm -hmm. now as i've said already you play in the orchestra for some of these songs as a member of the orchestra i'm always really interested to know what it's like working with the ico in real life i know there are some really cheeky characters in the string section so how has that experience been for you oh they're just they're an absolutely amazing bunch of 
uh, individuals uh, and as a collective they're incredible and and you know that they're led by by amazing leaders you know every every orchestra has has a leader and leader section leaders and management leaders and and individuals within sections who are leaders and you know all of that adds up uh to to really progressive uh advancement in 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 the music uh and to a great time you know they're they're jerry and and katrina and and all the team uh behind the scenes are, are awesome people beautiful people to work with a joy very positive um like a, nothing is is too difficult nothing is impossible uh, so it's great when you're working with people who have that kind of a vision and, and the ability to follow through. And then the players are all, I mean, awesome players. And as a fiddler who studied some classical for a time, it's daunting to be sitting in there with a fiddle um, amongst them all. Because, you know, as I said, you know, I straddled both the, the traditional and classical words when I was young. And I would be going to my classical teacher and she'd say, uh, have you been playing traditional this week? And then I'd be going to the, my grandmother who was teaching me traditional. And she'd say, have you been playing classical this week? And so I kind of... I understood that there were there, there were two worlds. Uh, I had a foot in, in both camps, and I think sometimes, I don't know if this is the case in, in other uh, worlds where where there's where there's a kind of a native folk music and and and, and European art or classical music. Uh, there's some maybe suspicion is in the word, but there's some fear. I suppose traditional musicians would be looking at the world of classical music and thinking, well, you know, you know, it's it's, it's it, there's a lot of time put into technique and a lot of time put into practice, and and so we you know we. We'd feel a little bit sort of um, just maybe not as confident, uh, you know, in, in that arena. And and I know that in the classical world, uh, there's a kind of a fear of taking on traditional melodies or ways of playing because you know it's not our expertise. It's not something we grew up with or wh whatever that might be. So um, any opportunity to try and bring those two worlds together and to make them collide in a way that creates something uh, beautiful, you know, is something that I I've I've always thought would be a good idea. I know there's a Kickstarter fund for this project to continue, and it seems to me you're at it again, supersizing, you're doing something more. What's going on after Kilkenny for Roisin Reimagined and the ICO? So we're, we're, fi we're filming um, the, the, the project for the Kilkenny Arts Festival uh, to go out as a stream on, on the Kilkenny Arts Festival website and social channels on the 13th of August. And um, we, we spent two days uh, in, in Limerick rehearsing and recording audio as well. And so it's our intention to release uh, you know, a recording of the music, and it, this is a tricky time to be releasing music um, as a, as, you know, as a package or as a product. Uh, there's great uncertainty out there because of streaming and digital downloading and, and, and you know, the sort of reduction in returns for, for music. But I kind of felt that, you know, having gone through the full year of preparation and work and thought and, and bringing this together, it would be a terrible shame not to have something physical. And I have started listening to LPs again at home in the last year and a half. Uh, and there's something beautiful about, you know, having an LP cover in your hand, taking the time to lift the lid and the needle, put the LP on, sit back, read the sleeve notes look, that you can read, learn too small, uh, look at the beautiful artwork. And then uh, after four or five numbers, have to get up and turn the record over. And so, you, you know, you're invested in in that time and in, in, in giving the music time. Uh, and so I love that idea. And so we hope to release on vinyl and on CD. Well, we will release on vinyl and CD and digital download. So, so that, that's the next step. Fantastic. Donal, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me this morning. I really appreciate it. Good luck with the rest of the recording. And I look forward to seeing the final product and indeed hearing the vinyl LP. Matthew. Thank you so much. Great to chat with you. Roisin Reimagined is being streamed from the Kilkenny Arts Festival and will be available between the 13th and the 15th of August. Tickets are available online, so look up the kilkennyarts.ie. Take care, and I will see you next week when we will be getting a sneak preview into what's coming up next for the ICO.